guys. How are you both doing today? You all right? Doing okay. well, Steph. How are you doing, man? Yeah, really good. Thanks. So maybe I'm being dumb, but are there like actual exorcist schools or classes anywhere? Do you know, when you were doing your research, did you find out if those things exist? Yeah, that's what this is based on. So this, yeah. the film started because there was um, the Vatican is putting up more exorcism schools throughout the world. And I think that's where our writer got the idea from, like for this movie. Because in terms of like a research, Jack and I, I read that you worked with like a therapist to help you understand the role and the kind of the grief the character feels. How was that research for you? How much did that help you in this instance? A lot. Um, she's experienced a lot of trauma in a way that I haven't personally. So uh, working with her, figuring out where trauma lies in the body, um, f like fight versus flight. So a big part of Anne in this movie is under these circumstances where everyone else kind of like would goes to fight or flight, she's able to calm herself in those moments and actually like approach the victim. So that's where I was trying to like figure out how to like live with a certain amount of turmoil in her body, but also be able to focus on the person at the same time. Is that quite normal for yourself, for both of you actually, to kind of to undertake that kind of level of research for a role? Or is it just something that you do based on, on the project and the character? Yeah, my approach changes based on the project. What about you? I think that any information that I can glean from any source informs the character, right? Whether that's watching movies that have already been made, reading about Catholicism, uh, the Vatican, all of that, anything that I can get that will maybe influence a moment in the film or on, on a play and on stage, uh, I'm always seeking those answers, right? Our job as actors is to ask questions all the time and continue to ask questions. So it's part of the fun of working on, on something like this. It's interesting because what I saw in your characters was this quite deep-rooted kind of unspeakable fear, but it all seems quite internalised. Is that quite a challenge for actors to display that level of like terror without being able just to scream, let it all out and to keep it quite, quite contained? I think, I think as a character, there's characters that express fully and are outward with them. You were dealing with a nun and a priest. So I think that a lot of it is, is muted and controlled in the space that they're in, let alone the people that those feelings are um, a part of. I, I think the camera is such a beautiful medium because it can pick up on things that are happening. It's so personal that you don't need to necessarily say what's going on. It's reading into the individual. It's like it's a lens into the eyes. Um, I think that's more interesting approach uh, to acting. I don't know whether it's more difficult or not. It's the same thing you're going through, whether you're expressing it outwardly or it's going on inside personally. I think, uh, and I can only speak for myself, but I, I do have a, a feeling that a lot of actors would say this. One of the hardest emotions to play is terror and fear because it's such an organic experience when it happens to you in real life, right? So to recreate that, experience is tricky and, and is challenging. Um, and I think a lot of actors will say the same thing. It's, it's something you have to navigate uh, differently. Yeah. Also, I guess it's quite a vulnerable kind of emotion, isn't it, to Absolutely. show? Is it, do you reckon, is it something that you have to kind of, it comes with experience to be able to, to give yourself to something like that on set in front of the room for the people? That's the job, man. That's the job. <laughs> I think it's, uh, I always say that I embarrass myself for a living because <laughs> you have to stand in front of people and, and say, I am in a room full of people who might not know you and there's a hundred people watching and the director and uh, 10 producers behind a camera and you have to be willing to, uh, to, to open yourself to people in a way that you, you don't do in your everyday life. Uh, but, but that is the job, that's what you sign up for. I heard someone once say that it's like you have to take a, veg a vegetable peeler to your skin right before you act. So you become extremely porous and almost like vulnerable. It's like fresh skin in front of the sun. So anything that happens to you, you're reacting to in that moment. And there's something calm and meditative about it because it's like a freeing of yourself. And I think it's a little bit of a drug that we chase as actors. I think that's why we do it. I mean, I was thinking about this, this role, Jackie, as well. And you only have to see like the most recent Halloween film, uh, which of course just finished up that franchise yeah. recently to know that this is a genre that breeds such great stomping ground, I think, for female protagonists. What do you think it is about horror that allows for kind of complex, well-rounded roles for women? Ooh. <laughs> great question. Yeah. Um, well, I think horror as a genre is always pushing boundaries in terms of the, w the way it's shot, the way that it's like filmed. Um, you have every aspect of the human condition that's often being questioned in horror. 
Um, in this specific, specific film, what I think is so unique that it's not just a woman fighting the way a man fights. She, it has the opportunity to approach it with her own perspective and from a female perspective. And I just think horror is the right genre to, I guess, put things into question more so than a lot of other places. Yeah, I mean, you're both playing sort of layered characters that are nuanced and meaty, but that is so true, I think, of the horror genre. Yeah. With that in mind, do you think it's a genre perhaps overlooked when it comes to things like awards and festivals and stuff like that? Yeah. I think it's oversaturated. I think uh, the same kinds of stories can be told, and that becomes a bit uh, monotonous, right? You, As an audience member, when I go to the movies, I want to see something different and new and be challenged and excited for different reasons, right? Mm -hmm. And I think um, I've seen some incredible movies that have come out in the last couple of years that have sort of turned the genre on its head. A24, uh, Lionsgate, they, these, these companies produce really interesting uh, unique stories. And I think that's why people gravitate towards them. They're continuing to reinvent the genre or trying to as, as much as they can. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Agree. <laughs> <laughs> and Christian, when you get, because I just for thinking, when you get kind of roles like this, as I mentioned, they, they are such kind of good characters. Do you ever kind of look back and thank certain moments? I guess there's kind of certain moments in a career that you go, that helped me or this helped me. And I guess when you're in a show like, 13 Reasons Why, which has been so popular on a platform like Netflix. Do you often look back to moments like that or those casting moments and just go, that was a, a turning point, I suppose? You, you don't know when you're in it until you're in, uh, until afterwards, right? Like, anecdotally, uh, uh, um, I, I, I only got that job uh, because I hounded the casting office for a year. My ex-girlfriend was in, was in the running for uh, the role that eventually went to Alicia Bow, Jessica Davis. And I read the script with her and I knew I could do it. Uh, and for a year, they told me, no, we didn't want you to do it. Um, so I think uh, you don't know what's going to come of these things. And if anybody would have told me that uh, 13 Reasons Why I would have taken on the life that it took on, I would have laughed at them. You know, it was this little labor of love that became this big mo movement at the time. Uh, so it prepares you for the possibility of that sort of impact. And you hope you have that sort of impact as an actor, you know, you want to be a part of something like that and you hope for it again. Uh, but I think I would be incredibly naive and probably disappointed if I went into every project, every audition thinking this is the moment, you know. If you wear that suit, you'll get a lot of roles. I know that. From <laughs> <laughs> this seems to be popular. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Um, I was going to ask about, in terms of being in a horror movie, I'm just interested to know as actors now who, who have sort of fit into this genre, you've pulled back the curtain to a point where the illusion, I suppose, dissipates because you know all the mechanics of how the scares are created and how the effects are made. Does it change your kind of re relationship in any way or shape or form with the genre now as an audience member, as now you've stepped behind the curtain and seen how it all works? The only thing that's different for me is like if I watch our film, it doesn't have the same fear that I think other audience members, like I know that it's like a green dummy that we're like sticking our hand in. It looked a little bit like a sex doll. <laughs> um, uh, but when I watch other films, they still hit me in the same way. Um, I think it's kind of your job to continue to be able to be lost in the art of storytelling when you watch a movie. I, I, I think I'm more impressed when I, ah. because you know, uh, you know how the sausage is made, so to speak, right? So. When I am scared genuinely by a film now, I, I'm going, wow, they, these guys are doing really great work because you know what's mm -hmm. happening. You know, I, I saw a film, uh, Barbarian, that came out a couple of weeks ago, and I was so impressed by the film because you know, you know what goes into making something like that. So I thought it was, uh, it, it's just much more impressive, and I appreciate the, the actors and the and the storytellers that are that are putting that together. Thank you. That's all I got time for. Thanks so much for your time, Sam. Maybe we can meet up again one time. Maybe for a sequel. Who knows? Thank this you. I, like a... I love that idea. I lived in London <laughs> for a year and I miss it, my friend. So it was good to meet you. Yeah, let's grab a yeah. drink. Yeah, then all right, cheers. Take care, guys. Cheers. Thank you so Thank much. you. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys. Hey You Guys, huh? Hey you guys, Is that yeah. from the Goonies? It is indeed. Yeah. Nice. Hey You Guys.